We got a call over the weekend that there was a little girl in the hospital who needed a home. She was essentially a little girl all by herself um, that was born in a pretty tough set of circumstances. She was born uh, tox positive for methamphetamine. The effects of the methamphetamine in her system for the first five weeks, she was almost comatose. We had to wake her up to feed her. We worked with CTC. She was receiving physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy here beginning at um, 10 months of age. First therapists we had when um, we came were Darcy and Ellie. Their compassion was amazing and just the knowledge that they had. You could tell with their whole being that this is what they were meant to do. She was presenting typical as what you would see in a drug exposed baby. So she had issues with self-soothing, she had issues with engaging with her environment appropriately, um, basically moving around her environment was very difficult. We didn't know what the outcome was going to be at the time. From the get-go you could tell she had a lot of spirit, a lot of spunk, she was a fighter. And then she started to get better which was pretty amazing. Everything was going well. She was starting to meet all of her developmental milestones. And then we just didn't see her for a while. A week shy of her first birthday, uh, the court ordered that she be reunified with her father. So we had to meet them in a park and hand her over. It was three months to the day that we handed her over. When he got a phone call from CPS saying that she was in the ICU at uh, UC Davis Children's Hospital with a traumatic brain injury and, and some other issues. She was 15 months old. It's been classified both by law enforcement and CPS and the courts as a non-accidental injury. It was not an accident, it was abuse. It was a subdural hematoma on the left side of her brain. Um, she also had hemorrhages in both eyes, um, bite marks, bruising, and healing fractures in both legs. She also had significant weight loss in the three months that she had been back. She had bald spots in her head that would suggest that she was just laying in a crib for an extended period of time. and and it is something that to this day keeps me up at nights. You have all of these specialists who are telling you, be prepared that she might need care her entire life. Watching her have a major seizure and say, this is it, she's, for the rest of her life, she's gonna need nursing around the clock. She had other plans. <laughs> when she left our care in August, she was taking three to five steps on her own unassisted, saying a few words. And when she returned to our care in November, she had absolutely no use of her right side. She wasn't speaking, she wasn't reaching, she wasn't moving, she wasn't crawling. She wasn't able to sit up. After the traumatic brain injury, we now had to focus on her relearning and just becoming aware that her the right side of her body existed. You think of all of knowledge as like a pyramid. On the bottom of that, the foundation is our sensory system. So our hearing, our seeing, the way that we balance. If there's miswiring, you know, the input's coming in, but she's not necessarily receiving it or doesn't know how, to, how she's supposed to respond to it appropriately. So she was seeking lots and lots of movement and deep pressure to her major joints. It's very unsafe when kids are seeking that because they don't know how to protect their bodies. And her pain tolerance was also very high. So we had to teach her that is an ouchie. You can't just jump off the couch face first. It was amazing to watch how the therapist used every tool they had available, including her brother. Siblings and peers are actually the best therapist. Leah's older brother was such a great helper. He would tell him to try one thing with her and he would do that apparently the whole rest of the week. She's got some angel. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or a couple. She's doing amazing. Every specialist we've seen has told us in one way or another, children do not normally recover like this from injuries like she had. It's just been amazing.
She basically is now speaking in full sentences. She's not only using her right hand, but actually it's becoming almost a dominant hand for her. We have discharged her from therapy. She no longer needs occupational therapy, speech therapy, or physical therapy. She is now in her preschool setting, thriving with her peers. I miss Brooke. She talks about Brooke and Ellie and Darcy at home and wants to know where they are and what they're doing. To her, they're part of her family. It's why I'm a therapist. It's one of the best, most fulfilling things that I could ever imagine experiencing. Being a part of a team that can change not only one little girl's life, but all the people that she's gonna influence the rest of her life. Three days after her third birthday, we were able to adopt her. So she is officially and forever part of our family.